Hi everybody, Anna K. Morse here with your coaching video of the day. And um, I wanna piggyback off of my video yesterday, just talking about um, the messiness of it all. And <clears throat> there's another component to that that's good news, but it's also not good news. <laughs> And this is the this is the coaching. Um, no one's coming. So this was um, a term that I learned a long time ago, and it has been so helpful. Um, and also, like sometimes not good news. So I'm I'm gonna land it with a story as I do. Um, no one's coming. So. Uh, circle back to, I'm 43. I was born in 97 and I'm living in New York. I'm 21 years old and it's 2001. My parents split up. My sister is really sick. Um, my 9-11 uh, happened. I broke up with my long-term relationship and I get a new job. Um, I flew home from Paris the night before 9-11 happened. I actually was on my way to the World Trade Center the day that 9-11 happened. Um, so all of all, like the whole world blew up and already my family had, um, had started to, to blow up for lack of a better word. So that was, you know, the same kind of six months. I moved to New York in June of 2001 and everything. Yeah, it was about six months. So I say this because um, I learned the really in a very clear way that no one's coming, right? Like the, the home that I would have fallen back to had New York not worked out, like really didn't feel like it existed. Although mom and dad, if you're watching, I know I always can come home. I know all of that, but there was a different feeling, right? Like the the unit that I was accustomed to was was gone. My sister was no longer at home. Like there, it wasn't the same. Um, and the way that I dealt with that um, was not by going to therapy or journaling or doing yoga, the things that I know to do now. It was by drinking, um, shopping, um, dating guys that were not worth my time. Sorry if you're watching this and you were one of them. Um, uh, just partying, like just being in superficial situations, a lot, lot, of, lot of cocktail parties. It was New York. And that landed me two years later in, I think it was like between 40 and $50,000 of credit card debt. Now I'm really lucky because I, um, my parents had paid for college. So I, I was very, very fortunate and am very fortunate that I did not have any college loans or things like that to pay off. But I also had, let's call it $50,000 worth of credit card debt. I come from a family that I never knew that you didn't have to pay off your credit card every month. So like that was something that I learned in New York. I some like one of my roommates was like, oh, just don't just pay. See this right here. It just says minimum balance. So that's a good analogy, isn't it? Right? Like what are we putting in minimum balance into our lives? And then we expect like all of the, all of the rewards, all of the, fruits of our labor when we're just putting in the fucking minimum balance, right? So I did the minimum balance until they were all maxed out. I had creditors calling me like I felt like I couldn't breathe. I should mention, I made $40,000 a year. So being 23 years old with my whole, you know, foundation having shifted in, in my life and my family, and now I live in this like huge city I make $40,000 a year and I have $50,000 of credit card debt. There was no path that I could see to get out of that. And that was when I realized that I had this belief that I was going to fall in love with some guy who would just make it all go away. And if you haven't thought that before, now I'm not talking about like women believing that men are going to come in and save you. We all do that in some regard. It's just a human thing that we do. Whether you think, oh, when I have a kid, then it'll be okay. Or, oh, when I buy that house. Or, oh, when I get that job. We all think that this thing over here that we are trying to get is what's going to make us feel better. And also that maybe even in my case, for sure, that like somebody is going to just do it for me. 
I got news. No one's coming, guys. Because guess what? What I learned was that there was no fucking guy on a white horse with $50,000 to pay off my credit card debt. What I ended up doing was going into pharmaceutical sales, which was pretty far out of alignment for where you can see I am now, except it taught me people. It taught me that because I love people so much, I could get paid to do that. And what happened was I became the number, I think we were the number two sales team in the entire United States. And I wrote a check for $50,000 and paid it off by Christmas the next year. Because I finally got that like, I am the judge and the jury and I'm making everything happen. Now, I believe I am co-creating with the universe. And pharmaceutical sales was a great way for me to really start taking a look at wellness, right? Because it's really, you know, in that business, I believe it's more about sickness. And that's fine. That's what it's designed for. Um, but then it led me into a different wellness conversation. But really what it taught me is that people just wanted to be seen. I wasn't the, the, the best sales rep in the United States because I had the best drug. I had a drug that was like every other drug. It really didn't matter. Sorry, Johnson & Johnson. Um, what mattered was that I knew every fucking kid's name in that doctor's office. I would walk in, I knew the entire staff, and I knew all of their kids, where they were going to school, what they were doing, so much so that a couple of years ago, we ran into a Dr. Schmarin from Park Avenue in the airport in Cabo, and I was able to recall everything about his family. He stared at me like, who are you, you crazy stalker? But see, I knew that in order for me to set myself apart, I would have to come from, like, I would have to be 100% me. And 100% me, like, cared about where his kids were going to school, cared that his wife was the one designing his office and that Gladys was pissed off about it. I still can't remember, that I can't believe in I'm remembering all these names, but like, who I am at my core is like, I really do care. And I really want people to know how much I care. Now, what was cool about that is the universe started showing me at a very young age, like here, you can get compensated for that. Now there was a lid on it because I wasn't quite in alignment because you know me selling medications really isn't quite right. But me selling you your best life, that's the fucking money pit. Like that or money, what, I'm very, very bad at <laughs> cliches. Like that's my sweet spot, right? Because true wellness, only you know, only you know. I can tell you what my, what my happiest life looks like, but it's different than yours. And I can teach you how to find that. That I'm fucking clear about. I've done it countless times. I do it even when people don't want me to do it. I can't stop doing it. And that's the piece is that like no one else is coming. No one is coming to make your life great. If you are not happy in your marriage, no one's coming to save it. No counselor is calling you up to be like, hey, want to make an appointment? That's not happening. No one's also coming if, I remember when, um, when I got pregnant with Jack, I was like, oh, whoa. So I really have to do this. Like I was somebody that still wasn't sure. Like I have two kids and I'm still sometimes not sure. And Derek said the other night, he was like, well, when Jack is seven, I was like, what? He was like, did you, do you not think things through? And I was like, oh no, I never think things through. I just do what feels great. And he was like, you know, Jack's go still going to be here at seven. And I was like, no shit. Okay, well, let me, that's too far down the road for me. Let me just focus on this right now, right? Because it can really freak me out. I'm much better at like the now, the now, the now. And I know that no one's coming. So I'm laying the groundwork now to have a really great seven-year-old. And that I've coached this before. Like I, he, Jack, the minute he is tall enough to rinse off his dishes and put the, them in the dishwasher, he's doing that. I don't care if he's having a temper tantrum. He's putting his clothes in the dirty clothes hamper because I don't want to be his maid. It makes me resentful. And no one likes living with me resentful. So that's the thing, guys. No one's coming. If something's not working in your life, it's on you. It's on you. And I want to help you. I want to talk to you. I want to work with you. I'm not going to 
step around this. Fucking sign up for my coaching program. If you are somebody that is watching my video every month or every week, Jesus, I do it every day. What am I talking about? If you are somebody that is watching my videos every day, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to my website. You're going to sign up for my coaching pro program. It starts June 5th, but here's the deal. It actually starts when you register. So you could have it start right now. It's $14.99. So that's $500 off of the regular price. And what I haven't mentioned is that I have a membership community called the Reconnectors, which is not a band, but it's going to feel like a band. Um, and you're going to get the first three months of that free. So you're going to get like all the support that you need. And then after that, you'll get the founding member rate, which is super reduced as well. So I want to see you in my coaching program because this is like lights out stuff. This is the stuff that I was born to do. And I was born to make manifest what you were born to do. So if you're feeling off in any part of your life, any of it, I'm the person that can unravel that with you. I'm the person that can give you the tools because it, it only three months is not enough, but keeping that stuff going, that's what I'm good at. I love hearing from former clients that are like, I'm still doing the pages. I can't believe this and this happened and this happened and now I'm in a rock band and I quit my job and like we got a divorce and it went great or whatever it is, right? Like, just what are you waiting for? What the fuck are you waiting for? Okay. Sorry for the real talk. Not sorry at all. I love you. Bye.